If you don't already follow me on Instagram, head over to my page, hit that follow button, and check out any of my recent projects. I'm always posting on here. And if you ever have any questions or you want a model or a specific texture or something that I may be working on, go to my YouTube page, go to my community tab, and you can join the Discord channel that I've set up. There isn't a lot on there yet, but I am going to be posting there, and I will always answer any of the questions you have. And if you're ever interested in seeing any of my work in my full scenes, go over to fluxedge.com, click my full scenes, and you can see all of these things that I've created in their full quality and high resolution. Thanks for checking that stuff out. What is up guys? Flex Edge here and today I'm going to be showing you a really quick way how you can do wet floors and emissive materials like I have been doing in a lot of my recent renders. So there's multiple ways you can do this but I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest. So first thing you're wanna, going to want to do is open your internet browser and you're going to want to type in um, roughness texture. So if you already have a bunch of textures and stuff that you use, you can use any of the ones that you like. I have one that I, I'm going to use, um, but any of these textures that have a lot of interesting areas like this one, where you have darks and lights, even this, it's kind of a noise value. It'll work really well for what we're about to do. So I'm just going to close this and I'm going to create a new shader octane material. Double click on that. I'm going to change it to glossy so we have water and before I do anything more with that I'm going to put a plane in my scene Let's zoom out so and then I'm going to go back into this texture go to my node editor I'm going to make this larger so we can see and then I'm going to grab an image texture and attach this to the roughness. And so your roughness is basically going to say where on this glossy material there are rough spots and it'll give you that really wet dry look. So I'm going to click on my file explorer. Don't mind the projects I've been working on. Then I'm going to go to my scratch disk, my project files, materials, textures, and somewhere in here I have this nice Yes. So you can really use any material for this. So like this one, let me see if I can preview it. I can't on here. This is just a basic like rusty texture and I've colored it. Um, your, your roughness is basically a black and white value of that. So you can really use any texture you can find and just create a black and white version in Photoshop or something. So I'm gonna open my roughness, hit no now I have this roughness value so let me go back to the diffuse change the color down to like uh, dark gray and you can already see that there's areas on this map where there's highs and lows there's gloss and there's uh, diffuse areas and that's just from one single texture on your roughness map which is pretty much the whole purpose of that so I'm gonna apply this to my scene and I'm gonna change it to cubic just because I actually uh, no, I'm gonna leave it on easy math. Here. So now we can't really see any of this. Um, I'm currently in path tracing. My settings are I'm gonna go to my preset. So anytime you're messing with lights or really bright emissive materials, you want to turn down your GI clamp. It'll usually be at a really really high number. This will get rid of a lot of the fireflies and issues like that. Change your Cossy Blur and my samples. Unless I'm doing a full on like 4K or 8K render, I'm going to usually have these at like a thousand, even 800. I'll keep it on a thousand for now because that's fine. Um, turn my post off for now. Um, and then from here, we need some lights because if we don't have lights in the scene, we aren't going to see any of the cool roughness values happening. So I'm going to go ahead and create an object and make a daylight and I'm only doing this but you can see it the texture already I'm only doing this because I want it to be nighttime and this is how I control that typically when I'm setting up my scenes if I want night I do put a daylight I make it nighttime so just grabbing the uh, red bar and dragging it 90 degrees so it's completely dark opposite would be like noon but I want it to be nighttime so uh, now I'm going to show you how to make an emissive material. 
so we can add it to this. So first thing I'm going to do is add a torus. Uh, I'm going to turn this 90 degrees. Let me turn on my shading lights. And now I'm going to change the ring segments and make them go up so it's more of a circular object. Change the ring radius down. And now I'm going to change the pipe radius so it's like really, really thin. So let's maybe one. Now I'm going to back this up. So you can't see it yet, obviously. So now I'm going to create shader octane material again. Double click that. Leave it as diffuse. Go to your emission tab. Now anytime I'm making glowing materials, I use black body emission. Um, I'm sure there's other ways to do this with the regular Cinema 4D materials. It's obviously a little different. Um, so, oops. so I'm going to go back into this mission, black body, click on this. So as is, you could just apply this here and you will have this really, really nice glow. And you can already tell it looks pretty great. So right there, add some objects you're seeing. You've got a nice, nice lighting. Um, but I don't want this. I want it to look a little better than this. So when you're using an emission, it's just kind of applying this bright light to your object. So if I'm using things like this, which are going to be a primary focus, whether it's this or a square, or a triangle or something, I'll always hit surface bright, uh, brightness because it, it kind of dims it down a little bit and you can even see around the preview here. It goes from like really bright to more dim and it's just a more kind of focused light. I just like the way it looks better. It's not as bright. So now I'm going to go ahead and adjust this. You can turn it up or down, make it how bright you want it. Obviously that's way too bright. And then um, the temperature is in Kelvin. So it's kind of like any light bulb. So your 6,500 is going to be daylight. And then you have like 2,300 light, which is a really like off white yellow. And then you can make it really yellow, orange, or red. Now, if you're going for those colors, this is the best way to achieve that look. But if you're going for like, you know, really bright colors, put this back up to 6,500, like blue or green or something. You want to click this texture button and then go to Cinema via Octane, change this to RGB Spectrum, click on here again, and then change your color to whatever you want. If I want like a blue green. Now, you, as you can see, this is already really bright. It's because I turned that up. And also, let me show you in my settings. If I would have had my um, GI clamp way up at 10,000, this just gets really pixelated and there's fireflies and it looks really uh, messy. So that's why you keep this really low. Not too low, but just low enough. So now that we've added this color, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. You can even see the fireflies in the texture. That's how you know it's, it's going to get crazy if you don't have your GI clamp down. So turn this down and you can see it's not the glow is the color that I want, but the, the actual object isn't quite the color that I want. So I'm going to turn this down a little until I kind of get that more green look and there you go so the more I turn this up the more blue it's going to get because higher values in Kelvin is blue where see if I cleared this see how it's more of a blue and lower values are red so now lower this to that greenish color that's kind of nice. Turn it up a little bit, maybe not too much. Now, another way you can affect this glow, which is what I always do when I'm making these types of scenes, is I go into my Octane settings and I change my post um, options. I enable them. So mine were on this setting on my preset already, so they were kind of high. But I turn up the glare power a little bit, or the bloom power. And this is all dependent on your scene scale. So if your scene is like really, really large or really, really small, these values are either going to be really big or really small too. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can adjust the ray power. I like to keep them really low and kind of change this down to like two or one, the ray amount. That way I don't have quite as many rays popping off that. And then 
uh, now that you can see this better, you can just add like a slight glow. You can also change the glare angle. So I like that a little more. And then even uh, glare blur, whether it's real uh, harsh or it's just very blurred out. And you can also change the spectral intensity, which will kind of add more colors to the band of brightness. So if I turn this way up, you see it starts changing colors and then you can kind of shift it with the spectral shift. But I typically don't use that. I don't, I don't know, I just haven't found a use for it yet. Um, but as you can see, now my, if this was on a road, my road would look very like wet. Um, you can adjust this even further by changing the mix. So if I don't want it quite that intense and I want it more like glossy, you can turn the roughness down, the mix. And if you want to even go into the image, you can change the gamma and it will also change the intensity of this. So if I turn this up more, it's, it's gonna be more harsh in certain areas than others. And that kind of looks more like wet pavement because you're going to have like these different highs and low areas and pavement. It's never going to be perfectly flat. Um, and, and it all depends on the texture that you use too. This texture might not be the best for pavement, but it, it works for this kind of scene. And also adjusting the power changes kind of some of those similar settings. But if I were to do like ice or something, this material would work great. Um, and that's basically it for this tutorial. So if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments or join my discord that I've created. If you go to my community tab on my page, uh, there's a link to that. If it's expired, just message, type a comment on there and I'll respond to it and I'll get you in my discord chat. It's not really set up right now, but, um, I will definitely answer your questions there and I'm going to be including textures and models that I've created. I already have some that I just need to upload. Um, as well as step-by-step -step breakdowns. If you guys ever need help with something, I will help you on my Discord channel. So if that's all that I've got for now, uh, thank you for watching.